Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Age of Sail Tournament and From the Depths. I am once again your host, Chromoid, and today, in episode 8, we will be watching the Sumiko Stick Thingy going up against the Hemitard by CR and Happy. Whoops, uh, the Sumiko Stick Thingy is made by Headsetless Leaner. Sorry about that. Uh, let's review these real quick before we get into the fighting. Over here, we've got a triple ship entry, clocking out the maximum allowed materials. It's actually 81,000, but part of that, I think, is this uh, spawn stick. I checked, and it is, it is legal. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Stuff in my throat. But you see, uh, he's, uh, Headsetless Leaner has chosen to use some uh, some NPCs for this ship, which I think is kind of cute. Um, there's the one there. I can't remember. Th I think there's some. Arg. I, I can't drive. Yeah, there's a couple in here. There's one there. There's some in there. I know there's there's a a couple of them. Yeah, there's one. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. There, there's a couple of NPCs. There's an AI, I think, like an AI block somewhere on there. Uh, they're very thin, um, very compact. A lot of guns on them, but they kind of they kind of remind me of cruisers or um, gosh, I don't know what the sailing equivalent would be. Oh my gosh, it's got an NPC on top of the mast, the lookout. Yeah, they're 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 they're, they're kind of on the light side for ships, uh, kind of like the Golden Darkness fleet or the uh, spawn, the stick spawn thing, or thing spawn stick, whatever it was. Uh, but they're very, very, very pretty ships. I like these a lot. They're very, uh, very sleek. I like the rudder in the back. Even though it doesn't work, it's it's a nice, nice look to it. And over here, they will be facing off against the Hemitard by CR and Happy. I am, yeah, that's, that's the only entry he sent me. Um, 5,000 materials. I'm thinking it was kind of a joke. Like Either he it was a joke and he just submitted it as a placeholder or he's just messing around or maybe he just he meant to add more and forgot. I don't know. But um, this is going to be a short battle, I think. Anyway, let's get into it without further ado. I get my clock set up here. Hold on. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There it is. And we'll go in three... Two, one, fight. The stick thingies were spawned facing forward, as per uh, Leaner's request. Uh, there's a blossom of cannons on both of the uh, broadside facing ones. This one's gonna have to turn around to get a shot. Oh, they're explosive and they're hitting the hemi. Oh, oh, oh dear. Yeah, I, I said this would be a quick fight. The uh, heavy tart has already been decimated. It is down to 62%. <laughs> I don't think it was meant for this kind of engagement. Oh no. Oh dear. This will be a very short video. We'll probably wrap this into two videos. Uh, that's it, <laughs> folks. The uh, the uh, Simicus stick thingy has just destroyed the heavy tart in a matter of seconds. That took less than a minute. And look for this to despawn. Oh, this one finally got around to firing. Go on. Get out of here. It's not despawning. Oh, there it is. Okay. And that is it, folks. <laughs> Less than a minute and the, uh, or just over a minute, and the Sumiko Sticks thingy has beaten the Hemitard. I will go ahead and put another video in with this one so you can get a little more content. But uh, congratulations, Headsetless Leaner. You have won your first fight, and you're going to the quarterfinals, and uh, CR and Happy, I'd give you my condolences, but I think you kind of would have expected that to happen, knowing what you're getting, if you knew what you are getting into. Um, I don't know, I contacted you and tried to figure out what was going on, but, you know, it was a submission, so I'm taking it. <laughs> uh, anyway, good fight, guys. See you in the next video. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to ep to the ninth battle in episode eight. Still episode eight. I'm just combining the last battle and this one together since they're so short. But this is going to be the ninth battle in the Age of Sail tournament in From the Depths with your host Chromoid, and we're going to be watching in this episode or in this battle the Amelia by Sithfin going up against the SWR Pompadour C by Crazy Ninja 47. I'm just going to call it the Pompadour because that's a mouthful. Let's go ahead and look at these two uh, entries before we get on to the fighting here. The Amelia is a triple ship entry, 
but it only has two identical ships in its fleet. The center one, I'm guessing, is the Amelia. Let me look at it. Nope. No, that won't tell me. I, I believe I looked at these earlier. This is the Amelia itself. As you can see, it's a very, kind of a smaller ship. I guess that he had extra materials or something, or maybe it's a distraction ship. That could be part of the problem. Or it could be what he's trying to do is a dis uh, distraction. It's about the same size as the Hemitard from the last match. Um, and it's flanked by these two monstrous broadsiders. I uh, forget what these are called, but they are very, very large. Got a decent, no, about eight guns in the back. Uh, three rows of, very long rows of guns in the front, on the sides, and no guns that I can see in the front. So, you know, kind of a, more of a standard ship. Still got some cannons in the back. That wasn't unusual for ships at the time, though. That wasn't too unusual. Um, you had some with that. I love these crates here. Uh, just decorative, make it look like, you know, it's an actual ship. They each have three sails, or three masts, a bunch of sails, some decoration on the back, and that's about it. Over here, we have the Pompadour by Crazy Ninja 47 This is a very classy ship. Uh, it is made by, um, well, a, a bit of background on this thing. This was actually made by uh, Carmenera as well, or worked on by Carmenera, um, the one who also made the Queen Anne's Booty entry a few uh, episodes ago. Uh, Crazy Ninja took that uh, from their, their, their kind of their group that, that does a lot of these kind of um, replica type ships. He borrowed it for this tournament and um, re, kind of redid it, took out some metal and other stuff that was in there and made it specifically uh, fit for this tournament so he could enter it, uh, which I, I like. They're, they're both um, kind of the Queen Anne's Booty and this one are, are two ships of the same guild. Um, they're both, you can tell, the aesthetics are very, very good on these things. Um, very clean lines, uh, realistic look to it. Uh, you love these stairs going down to the hatch, or doubtless you would keep ammo in a real ship. They're not going to keep it in here, obviously, because uh, <laughs> there's no protection. And from the depths is not very kind to those who try to play by the rules of real life physics, usually. I say usually. The Queen Anne's booty was pretty realistic and it managed to win. <laughs> so, well, there's the ammo storage. It's pretty cool. Um, very much a realistic replica ship. Uh, down to the uh, down to the uh, the ship's wheel and the ammo storage. I really like it. Anyway, these two are going to be facing off against each other. The Queen Anne, the Pompadour, is a single ship going up against three. So I I'm not. We'll have to see. It's a broadsider. It might do better than than uh, you'd think, but I don't know. Numbers seem to have the advantage in this tournament. Well, let's get on with it. Fighters, or uh, not fighters, warships ready. Three, two, one, and go. Whoops. That's F-12, not F-11, silly. I'll settle into the water here. Sorry for that little snafu. These are probably going to get shots off first because they are facing broadside to their opponent. And, well, if they can turn to aim, there it goes. There's one, that one. They both fired. Pompadour is getting underway, I think. I don't know, it's not, it's not doing anything. Looks like those shots mostly missed, though. Yeah, they are all on. Excuse me, I've got some stuck in my throat. They're on. Oh, there it goes. The sails have finally come on. It needs to get underway quickly. Those two are already are already turning to face it, and they've got this 45 degree angle going on. That's going to be very, very lethal if it can't get around and get its own guns to pair. The good news for it is they're actually flanking it on either side, so it has a potential chance to fire on both of them as it, as it sails past them. Um, the Amelia in the middle is going to be a bit of a problem because it's going to have to pathfind around that, but this should be a good good fight for the uh, Pompadour if they stay on both sides of it. If they both get on the same side, well, it still could be a good fight, but uh, it'll be definitely harder for it to do maximum damage. Okay, so the second second broadside coming in from the Amelia fleet. First broadside for the Pompadour. See that that Amelia's broadside again kind of missed. Went through the up, up above the sails, but that one didn't. The Pompadour struck true and one of the big masts on the this large ship over here is gone. There's only two. No, there's three. So it's taken out two of the three masts on one of the ships. And as we've seen, losing uh, your propulsion in this mat and this sort of tournament especially is really, really bad news. 
because there's no um, there's no augmented turning allowed. You don't have any propellers or anything to help you spin faster. So if you're disabled and you're unable to move, um, even with rudders, you're going to have a very difficult time getting yourself to bear on your enemy at all. It's going to be up to them to put themselves in your, the path of your guns. Okay, so they're both firing at each other still. Pompadour's laying into this one. This 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 one over here is finally. I think it's starting to finally hit. So yeah, we see some. Uh, mass going there. Sorry about that, my uh, clock has decided to uh, no stop. There we go. Okay, my uh, phone is notified. Notifications are going off. I'm using it for my timer. The Amelia seems to have um, avoided taking damage so far. I would have thought that the Pompadour might have switched uh, targets there, but no, it's still firing on this one over here. Look at that damage. There's eight guns in the back firing off again. Pompadour tore a hole straight through that one. Almost demasted it. That handful of cannonballs missed. This one seems to be struggling. I'll find out what these things are called. Sorry for the jerkiness. I'm not very good at moving with the mouse. Okay, there's some hits on the Pompadour. It's finally gotten some blows in. A couple of explosions going off along the sides there. The Seven Provinces. That's what these ships are called. Excuse me. Yeah, seven provinces are struggling right now to get to get their uh, their shots. And I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. They're 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 shooting, and it seems like the cannonballs are coming in on target, but they're not hitting the pompadour. I don't see evidence of much damage. There we go. Or maybe they're kinetic. Nope, that's explosive. Or maybe it's just the gun exploding when it gets hit. So I don't, I don't, gets hit, I don't know. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Just a hail of explosive shells tearing into the side of the Pompadour. Okay, some of those are actually kinetic. Not all those are explosive. Some are kinetic, some are explosive. Wow. That's impressive. The Amelia is coming in for a ram on the Pompadour, it looks like. And this is what it wants right here. One ship on this side, one ship on that side. It can fire at will from both ends now. It's using its maximum damage output. And against multi-ship entries especially, that could be really, really dangerous. So those are mortars going off there. Yep, they both hit. It seems to have much better aim for some reason. Oh my goodness. And he's actually shooting at the, po at the seven provinces, but the, the Amelia is getting in the line of fire which is probably a good thing for the uh, Pompadour. It wants to do as much damage as it can. There goes another volley of shells from the other side. Look at this. Broadsiding on both ends. This is, I, I, I love seeing this. I think this is the first time we've actually seen this um, the, a ship with this layout putting its full firepower to use against a multi-ship entry. It's, it's quite impressive, though. This. Look at the detail on this thing. These are actually pretty, pretty. Well, they're, they're a little more plain, but I like the the few aesthetics that are there. They they kind of make it make it pop more. Oh no, this this Amelia is going to get broadsided as the uh, Pompadour tries to fire through it to get to his target. It's going to absolutely destroy it. Nope, it's going to fire over it. Okay, Amelia gets a free pass today. There goes the other broadside. This is a perfect setup for the Pompadour. Couldn't get any better. This managed to keep most of its guns alive. It's gotten its enemies on both sides of it now. It's at a perfect 90. This is a perfectly pomp uh, Pompadour. <laughs> oh, that's going to mess with my brain. Perfectly, almost perfectly perpendicular. It was perpendicular to both of its opponents. They're able just to rake them as it goes by. Now, ideally, what will happen is, as it sails through here, it'll make a large turn and come around to sail between them again. There it goes, firing off the, the starboard broadside. Maybe smashing some more of that mass on the Amelia. Yep, it hit a couple of... The Amelia's firing back, though. Look at that. Okay, so this just fired. That's a cloud shot. It seemed to have a lot of trouble being accurate. Those cannonballs are flying wide. 
I don't know what the deal is. And <laughs> the Amelia's just plunking away at the side of this huge ship. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, a mast is gone. Pompadour's lost a mast. That's always a good thing for the Amelia. Um, they really could use... The fleet could really use an advantage like that right now. Uh, one of its own is pretty much immobilized. Well, not totally immobilized. It's got a big a big sail left that hasn't been touched. But, I mean, it's 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 hard. Oh, no. Oh, Amelia's not low enough in the water. It's shielding the Pompadour from most of those shots coming from its sister ship. You're an escort, province. You're not supposed to shoot the thing you're escorting. Look at that. You're, you're, you're doing your job wrong. It's Amelia's fault for being in the way, though. It really is. It's acting as a, like a, a tiny shield for the Pompadour, and any damage mitigated by the Amelia is uh, a blessing in, in, for the Pompadour. As long as it can avoid getting shot more, um, it comes out ahead in that enga engagement, and the uh, Amelia is ensuring that. And because the Amelia is so close to the Pompadour, the Pompadour ends up firing over the top of the Amelia for the most part. But when the province over there fires into the Pompadour, the arc of the shells means the lower half all gets caught in the side of its uh, sister ship over here. That's not a sister ship, it's its escort. And they continue to shred top. As they both broadside, they continue to shred parts of the mass off the top of the Amelia. Those are mostly kinetic rounds. See how they bounce? They bounce off the sides like that? There goes a, a cannon. Mm, that's, that could be... That could be really unfortunate for the provinces. Um, explosives tend to work much better against wood. Um, kinetic works better against stone. Um, and unfortunately, both of these entries are wood, primarily. So the, um, if the provinces really want to do a lot of damage to this kind of ship, uh, in the most efficient way, explosive is just the way to go. Um, and that's how it was in, in history as well. Um, kinetic shells were the norm for wooden ships, um, and you could have these long, long engagements as they continually plunked cannonballs through each other, trying to hit an ammo storage and blow the enemy sky high, or put enough holes in them, they started to, you know, sink. And, you know, once you can't run away, then, then you know you close with your opponent and board them, ideally, or just threaten them with breaking fire that would kill all the crew. Uh, when explosives came around, wooden ships were done away with because one explosion on the side of a wooden hole, it didn't even have to go in the hole. Uh, in, inside of the hole itself, it, it could it could just uh, hit the outside and detonate with such force it would rupture a huge hole that you just could not repair in the side of the ship. And that was pretty much it. And God forbid you managed to get a shell down inside the hole itself before it exploded because that was almost a guaranteed ammo detonation every single time. And so, like, overnight, as soon as explosive shells became standardized, the uh, the wooden ship died. Because there just wasn't any room for it anymore in a world where TNT was being slung through the uh, air. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a unfortunate but true. And that's why we have the metal ships we have today. Because they can withstand high explosives a lot better than wooden ships. And that looks like... Hmm, almost looks like that mass should be disconnected, but it isn't. Maybe it's, it hasn't realized it's disconnected yet, I don't know. Pompadour has taken some damage, that's for sure. A lot of its guns have been hit, knocked off. The guns are very fragile, by the way. Um, even the kinetic cannons can usually damage them pretty badly, almost insta-killing them in most cases. Uh, the mortars are definitely a one-shot kill for almost any cannon being used in this tournament. Oh, there goes the mast. Okay, so the Pompadour is actually down to one mast. That's not too good for it. As you see, it's kind of uh, lost in its mobility. Let's look at the uh, report here. Get myself pulled away. There we go. Uh, Pompadour, 90%. Seven provinces. I'm guessing it's this one over here, 96%. Queen Regent is, okay, so once the seven provinces, once the Queen Regent, the Queen Regent is at 84%, and the Amelia's at 90%. Okay, the the scores are pretty close here, actually. The, uh, all these are up in the upper, in the mid-80s to upper 90s, and the Pompadour is right at 90%, so they're about even right now in, in terms of uh, hit points. So it's not as one-sided as it may seem. The, the Pompadour has lost its mobility for the most part, and that seems to have really evened out the odds. Uh, that said, if it does manage to despawn this 
uh, this uh, Queen Regent over here, it will uh, have a significant advantage over the Amelia fleet because, as I said before, uh, multi-chip entries are great for outnumbering your opponent and, you know, kind of getting a more cannons on target at once and, distract and make it hard for to choose a target, but if you lose one member of the fleet, it, all you have to do is knock it below half of its health, and suddenly a third of your fleet's health is gone, or worse, half of your fleet's health is gone if you only have two ships in the fleet. Now that Amelia, oh, <laughs> I was about to say, the Amelia, if it get these, gets despawned, is actually not as much of the resources gone as if one of those other two ships despawn because it's very small, but um, regardless, I think it might be just about to despawn because that was a ammo detonation from the rear, and it was down to 75%. That's a huge blow uh, to the ship. It's pretty much in effect, rendered combat ineffective now. It has one tiny sail left. Uh, the entire bottom is no doubt a wreck, and all that's left are the... Th that's okay, though, because these are the main damage dealers. The Amelia is more or less a distraction ship at this point. Um, and it seems to be doing its job. If it's taking the shots that should be going into these ships, then it's doing its job. It's keeping the Pompadour busy when it could be plunking shells into these two ships. Now the roles have kind of been reversed. We said earlier, I said earlier that the, uh, the Pompadour is in a really good position having these two on either side of it. Well, now it's got not only got them all on one side of it, it's got them on the entire entirely the wrong side. It's got them in the rear, and as we said, there are no guns. Or if there are, there's very few of them. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Just a handful of guns in the rear of the Pompadour. And that's, that is, that is really, sorry, that's really bad news for the Pompadour. Now, it can still do damage, which is a good thing, but the, uh, these two ships, and this one has full sail still, so it can, it can easily maneuver around of course, if it keeps sailing this way, it could come around and hit the broadside of the Pompadour again, which would be kind of a worse position than what it's in right now. It wants to be right here. It wants to be hitting the back end of this ship and knocking it, knocking vulnerable things like those rudders off. If it hits that, um, it's very likely that the Pompadour will not be able to turn at all. Uh, it'll be sailing in a straight line. Oh, and there go the sails. Sails are going up. That was a kinetic shell to the wooden beam. Did not kill it, fortunately, but the Pompadour apparently has lost the wind and is now going to be sitting still until it can get itself underway again. There it goes. Okay. It's turned itself to a point where it can actually sail into the wind again, or sail with the wind, and now it's got a broadside. It's been plunking away at this one, this uh, Seven Provinces. That's the Queen Regis. Been plunking away at it for quite some time now, which is good. Um, it's not what it needs to do right now, in my opinion. It needs to be hitting this one, which has guns and sails and can still get all of them to bear on the target. It needs to nullify that threat before it can really kind of start chipping away. So the Amelia fleet has a definite uh, chance in this right now. They're, they've got one ship loose on the back of the Pompadour, chewing it up. And if it does enough damage, like we said, the, the Pompadour could easily could easily take critical damage in this point. And if it did so, then the uh, the Amelia fleet could surround it and start uh, whittling it down, like we saw with the Golden Darkness fleet against the Verdict, uh, verdict class. We're at 4 minutes and 15 seconds left, however, so at this point, it's probably going to come down to a hit points battle, which will be pretty close, if I'm honest, because, uh, yeah, the, none, none of them have despawned, and... Uh, the Pompadour is down to 88. This one is still this this, this uh, member of the Amelia fleet is down at 90, still at 95, which is 95% of a third or of a half basically. But still, that means that this fleet has at least 50% of their hit points left, and the uh, Pompadour only has 88%. Oh, I just saw this Captain Bot Beard. Oh, that's excellent. I like this. That is very witty. More cannonballs zooming off to hit the uh, seven, the Queen Regent. That poor ship has taken a beating. It's much sturdier than it looks, though. They're, or it is as sturdy as it looks, I should say. They're very, very sturdy ships. Uh, it's just a shame that the Pompadour hasn't been able to really target this one at all, which is, it seems to have really handicapped it. It, it can't. It, I think it's trying to sail backwards, um, 
which is not really a good idea. I mean, it's progress of sort, I guess, but I mean, at this point, it's looking kind of dire for the Pompadour. I'm not sure it will win the hit points battle. It has two, less than three minutes remaining in this fight, and it still cannot seem to get itself on target with that uh, with that seven provinces over there. It's checking range here. The Queen Regent's a little furthest away, but it's still within range. And more broadside coming in from the seven provinces. Uh, slow but steady progress. Come on, Pompadour. The Amelia fleet is giving just as good as it's gotten. It has done a very, very good job of sticking to its target and making sure that it does not let it go. This one ship with the sail still on it has, has really done a good job of avoiding most of the damage. Um, because the Pompadour focused on that one over there, it has managed to avoid getting demasted and losing most of its guns, so it's been able to put very effective fire into the back and sides of this Pompadour. The last two minutes of this fight, we now have a full broadside battle between the last two, well, really functional ships in this fleet. Oh, and the Pompadour is now getting distracted by the other ships surrounding it. It's trying to turn back to face the Amelia, and this is what happens with a single ship versus multi-ships. Um, they can't figure out what to aim at, so their AI constantly switches targets, which means the entire ship turns to broadside a different target. And since these guns don't traverse very hardly at all, uh, they need to be pointing straight at the enemy in order to hit them. And so basically the Pompadour is taking away any chance it has of hitting that ship so it can hit this little one over here, and it's got a minute and 15 seconds left to do something, and that's, that's, that's not a very, very good choice in my opinion. Could easily lose this fight because of that decision right there. Of course, it's finally gotten its guns to bear on the Amelia. Maybe if it takes it out, it could, it could still win this. I don't know. We'll have to see. <coughs> Excuse me. Amelia's down to 66%, and now it's going to turn back to face the seven provinces behind it. It's just unfortunate it's not sticking to one target and finishing it off. And that's really, really going to cost it in the long run, I, I feel. This ship in the back has just been peppering it with shells all match long. And it's really starting to tell. The, the uh, Pompadour's taken a lot of damage from that. And it's done nothing about it. I wouldn't say nothing. It's down to 94% 7 provinces, but the Pompadour's down to 8 7 percent Alright, 10 seconds remaining. This is going to go to a hit points decision. I have to go and look at the blocks for each of these. 2, 1, and... That's it. Stop the clocks. Let's look at this. Okay, I'm going to try to look at each of these ships as the Pompadour it is still at 54, 57. Look at the blocks here. Seven provinces. I mean, I don't know. How do I decide this one? I guess I have to do some math. Okay. Give me a second, folks. And I will be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have done the maths, I have calculated the calculus, and it turns out that the cumulative percentage of the Amelia fleet is right at 85%, which puts them at a loss to the Pompadour with 87%. And just so you guys know, I didn't realize this until I did this math just now, but the um, Amelia fleet is 74,568 materials total. The Pompadour is only 40,397 materials. I'm guessing they couldn't shave that extra 397 materials off, or they could have had two. Uh, Crazy Ninja could have two of these Pompadours going in his, uh, in his entry. Uh, so just a little perspective here. This was a hugely... Um, just an unfair fight, or, or an unbalanced fight, I should say. Not unfair, obviously, because the uh, Pompadours won, but uh, the the Amelia fleet was vastly larger than the Pompadour uh, in materials and in ships. But nevertheless, uh, 
congratulations to Crazy Ninja 47. Your Pompadour has managed to just eke by with a 2% lead over the Amelia fleet. And my condolences to the Sith, and your fleet fought very valiantly. And it, it really, I thought it was going to win. I honestly did. I did not, I, 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 I finally got the answer back from the calculator. I was like, no, nah, no way. But that's what it is, man. Uh, sorry, your ships are done for this tournament. But thank you both for participating. And thank everyone for watch, who's watching this. I um, appreciate you guys coming and watching my videos. And uh, enjoy. hope you're enjoying this tournament. Um, until next time, I am Chromoid. And this is the Age of Sail Tournament. Bye-bye.